Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, coming before God this day, we pause in our lives and place this time before our loving Saviour, hearing his words in the Gospel and receiving the gift of himself through the altar. As we prepare to receive the body and blood of our Saviour once more, let us place before him those times we know we have fallen away from him, when we have taken a path into sin. We ask that his mercy and forgiveness may draw us back into communion with him and lift us up. Lord, you are born from the Virgin Mary for the salvation of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Christ, you died on the cross to heal the wounds of sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ. Lord, you rose from the dead, to open for us the gates of heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God, with this wonderful sacrament, have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so as to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. We live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Genesis. When Abraham heard his nephew Lot had been taken captive, he led forth his trained men and routed the abductors. After Abraham's return, King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. He blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham by God Most High, maker of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abraham gave him one-tenth of everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The 
response to the song, You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a you priest, are a priest forever. forever in the you line of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. The Lord says to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord sends out from Zion your mighty scepter. Rule in the midst of your foes. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Your people will offer themselves willingly on the day you lead your forces on the holy mountains. From the womb of the morning, like dew, your youth will come to you. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Beloved, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the living bread from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed to be cured. The day was drawing to a close, and the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowd away so that they may go into the surrounding villages and countryside to lodge and get provisions, for we are here in a deserted place. But Jesus said to them, You give them something to eat. They said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we are to go and buy food for all these people. For there were about five thousand men. And Jesus said to his disciples, Make the people sit down in groups of about fifty each. They did so, and made them all sit down. And taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. And all ate and were filled. What was left over was gathered up, twelve baskets of broken pieces. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Can be seated, please. Forgive me, I'm very huffy and puffy. Uh, asthma's up today, and uh, so if I, if I wander off and fall asleep, just talk amongst yourselves, you know, it will be quite nice. Uh, that's what it does. Corpus Christi, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
often regarded by people in the Church of England as a bit of a scary day. They think, oh, we're going to go and do all those Roman Catholic things and get carried away and do those papist stuff. What on earth is Father Richard going to do this year? What's he going to get us doing? Strewing rose petals around the church, processions around the parish, and all kinds of weird stuff. It actually sits very deep, though. It's not, it's not a, a twinkly um, feast, as it were. It's actually something which is very much part of our DNA, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Like very much of our faith, it's something that we can take for granted. We get, we get into a pattern of coming to church, we get in a pattern of saying our prayers, we get in a pattern of trusting in God and trusting in Jesus and asking the Holy Spirit to help us on. We get in a pattern of the various times of year, year of getting ready for Christmas, getting going through Lent, ready for Easter and so forth. But into the, this moment, in the height of our summer, just before Wimbledon starts up, here we go, we have this reminder of something which is very much of what we are, the body and blood of Christ. When I go back to days years ago when I was at Theological College, a long time ago now, it's a very strange experience when they train you to be a priest. Once you've gone through all the selection and uh, they say, yeah, we think you're what we need. You're going, I'm sure you don't. There's always someone a lot better down the road. And you go to Theological College, in my case, at Stephen's House in Oxford. When you spend two or three years, depending if you're 30 or above, so I only had to do two years, thank goodness. Um, you spend two to three years living in Theological Club College, going through a daily life getting up at seven in the morning, yep, seven in the morning, and going to chapel um, for morning prayer, uh, which we, uh, and then uh, mass, and then uh, whole days of lectures and, and, and teaching and workshops and so forth, and then singing even song every night, and going through the feasts of the year. And when you start your first of two or three years, um, it feels like it's, a, it, it's like a mountain to climb. You look at the whole year and you go, oh my word, look at the amount of stuff we've got to do. Ethics, doctrine, theology, history. Um, and then on top of that you've got Old Testament, New Testament, Greek, and then if you're really brave, Hebrew. I did it for one month and gave up. <laughs> it's too hard. But all of that lot, and you go, oh, how am I going to be that? But then actually you look back and you realise as you come to the end of the first year, You've spent a lot of time with other, in my case men, other people, who are preparing to be something. You are all there for one purpose. And we were told this quite clearly. You are there to see if you are ready to be made a deacon, not a priest, a deacon, the first part of ordination, when you finish your two or three years. You are there because you are heading towards something. As you get into the second year, or your final year, as you get off the Christmas, the whole mood changes. Because then you have, just after Christmas, we have what was affectionately called Father's Day. And that's when all the prospective priests that are allowed to have curates come and visit the college. And it's like a marketplace, really. They'll come and look at you. They'll have an idea who is available on the job market, as it were. <laughs> it's really quite a strange couple of days. And then you meet the person that you're going to go and spend the next two years with in your curacy. And at that point, it just changed. The conversation that we had night in, night out, or in our free time, which was about grinding our way through the academic stuff, all gets changed and it's like, what have you bought then? Have you been out shopping yet? Have you been to Whipples? Have you been that? A couple of us booked it, some cheap flights to Rome. We went and did all our shopping in Rome. It was cheaper than that and doing it here. What we came back, we went with empty suitcases. We came back with them full of stuff. <laughs> Still wear a lot of it to this day. And you get visits from all the people in the companies trying to sell you their casuals, their stoles. Every night after a couple of drinks, it's like a fashion parade up in the dorms. Because people are showing off what they got. And then you start planning the days of your ordination. 
And then those that have gone the year before are asking you to go along to their priesting ordinations. And you finish at the beginning of June and head off. And you realise something is going to happen. And you fear it, but you're excited. You feel completely unworthy and useless, but you know you have to do it. You spend the first year in your parish as a curate, as a deacon, alongside the parish priest, your boss, watching him, watching him week in, week out, day in, day out, at the altar as you're next to him, watching his hands go out. Send down the power of your Holy Spirit that this body, bread and wine, may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you go, not me. And then the bishop says, here's the date of your ordination and you haven't got much to say in it anymore. And ordained next to cathedral as I was. And the very next day, you are standing where your boss stood the week before. And everyone looks at you. And they'll wonder, can he do it? But it takes you a long time to realise that there was no problem, that there wasn't anything to worry about, because all the time you are becoming something bigger than you. And you start to realise as the years go by that that whole process of making you a priest is not about making you a priest. It is about bringing you and the people to God together. It is about gathering the people of God in communion, together before him. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give them thanks and praise. When you sing it, it's a bit more infinite. But that gesture, it isn't that gesture, yes, over the bread and wine, takes us into the heart of Christ's passion, his death and his resurrection, from Monday Thursday to Easter day. But that gesture is the gathering and the collecting gesture that you fear the most as a priest when you start. Not many of us do that, do you? Hello! It is a gathering gesture of drawing together into communion. Subsequently, I've been very lucky throughout the world. I tried to add up once how many places I've actually celebrated the Eucharist in. How many places I've actually called down the Holy Spirit to the bread and wine and Jesus has come amongst us and we have shared I think it's over 55 or 56 places now okay because I'll trend I don't have a diocese something like that many clergy it's only one for many many years that's where they are and the countless people I don't know how many people that I've shared communion with I really don't know As the priest, you move amongst people and you realise something, that we are one. That our, us here today, it is not just us, we are not the church, we are part of the church, drawn together in every place, sometimes in greater numbers, sometimes more intimately. But we are part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church based on the apostles, the same apostles that helped Jesus feed his people that day 
in Galilee. Being at one with one another and all the time, all of us, being in communion with Christ, receiving him in bread and wine, receiving him afresh into our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit and being drawn to him as we lift up our hearts to him. Week in, week out, day in, day out, hour in, hour out, minute in, minute out. Someone is receiving communion now, and now, and now, and now, and now, and now, you get the message. And in a while, you will be receiving communion. And then you, and you, and you, and then someone else, and someone else, someone else, someone else, until our Lord comes on the final day. The giving of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the giving of himself, binds the church together, now and throughout time, and will until he comes. It's taken me a long time as a priest to really get that under my, to get that, in many ways. I'll be lucky that I've been able to go and celebrate the mysteries in many places. I would a little bit more feel like that. But on this day, we are able to celebrate the fact that the body and blood of Christ is the nourishing and enriching part of our lives that we need and sometimes forget, but we need it nevertheless. Because it binds us together. As the body of Christ church on earth to the church in heaven. So in a few minutes I'll be back there and I will ask you to lift up your hearts to raise your lives to God. As one of my colleagues, one of my brothers from St Stephen's house will be doing with their congregation today. Maybe at the same time. Or maybe they started at half nine or eleven o'clock. Who knows? But nevertheless, and just down the road, Father David Wade will be asking his people to lift up their hearts. And then ten minutes later, to lift up their hands and receive the communion with God, Christ and one another. I think that's quite exciting. I can't wait to do it now. But before we do, we'll profess the faith that the church throughout the world holds together our faith in God, our faith in Christ, our faith in the Holy Spirit, and the church in which we dwell, drawn together by Christ with his apostles, who helped feed the people that day, by Christ, who through the apostles feeds us today, with his very, his very self. brothers and sisters, let us declare the faith we hold together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things remain. To 
us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. This kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so we offer our prayers as we approach the altar of Christ. We pray for the church throughout the world, the bishops, priests, deacons of this diocese who will gather this week together, and for all who celebrate the great feast of the communion of Christ. We pray for our well-being as the Church of God, and for discernment of our future, and realising the, the direction the Holy Spirit may lead us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in the world facing violence this day, for the peoples of the Ukraine, for the, those of the Yemen and Syria, for all for whom heartache and pain will be felt during these hours. We pray for the innocents and the refugees from those lands. And we ask for wisdom and for generosity for those who seek peace in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community in which we live, for our neighbours and our friends whom we share our daily lives with. We pray especially for those families struggling with financial difficulty at this time, for those unsure of their futures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are struggling with illness, injury, isolation or sorrow. For all on our parish sick list, for those who ask us for their prayers, for all who we hold in our hearts, that they may feel afresh in their lives the healing presence of Christ and find healing, hope and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the departed, the victims of the war in Ukraine. We pray for those whom we love and yet see no more, for those who shared the faith with us, And as we offer the departed into the loving arms of Christ Jesus, our Saviour, we pray for ourselves that we may come into the communion of the saints and dwell with him in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we place ourselves before our loving Father, offering to him all those things we bring this day in our, in our own hearts, all that we seek guidance for, things that we seek comfort for, and the blessings we acknowledge, we pray, in the company of one another and in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hear us as we raise up our lives to you, O Lord. Read our hearts well and answer these prayers in ways we know in ways we, can't, we cannot understand. Call upon you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you.
brothers and sisters in Christ, it is by sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery, in the offerings we here present. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his Apostles, establishing for ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished Lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, Nourishing your faithful by his, this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race bound by your one world may be enlightened by one faith and united in, in one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that faith and sweetness of your grace we may pass over to the heavenly realities here for shadows. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song of adoration, and we with the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and from all you have created, rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Lord, 
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, our following me, Mark, and Mary, the cross, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servants, your bishops, clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously for the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind and witness to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Saviour has taught us, so we have the confidence to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you. Only say the word, and I shall be saved.
led us to this. Grant our Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed, <coughs> which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Before I send you out, uh, we notice in our prayers all the priests, deacons, priests, uh, I should have put bishops of our diocese and so forth. Did I put bishops? I can't remember now. No, I didn't. Bishops, priests and deacons, the other way around. All this week we are in, uh, from Monday to Thursday, we are on our clergy conference. And they're sending us all off to Sirencester, or the Agricultural College at Sirencester. They, just, they found out years ago it was better to send us a long way away so that we didn't find lots of excuses to nip back and nip out when we used to go to places in the diocese. There's always a way of trying to get out a little bit early. But anyway, this one was released for the second time we're off to Sirencester. Well, which means a long journey tomorrow, but nevertheless, uh, who knows. So, um, do keep us all in your prayers, however the prayers go. Lord, look after him. No, Lord, inspire him. That'd be better, um, as we all come uh, spend time there. Right, that's it really. Time to send you out into the world. Um, it is getting more muggy by the minute, isn't it? Um, open the windows and the doors, it hasn't made much difference. So take care today, keep the fluids going in, and etc, etc, etc. Okay, would you stand please? The Lord be with you. May the effects of your sacred blessing, O Lord, make themselves felt, felt among your faithful to prepare them for the spiritual sustenance of the minds of all, that they may be strengthened by the power of your love to carry out your works of charity. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. The angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Pour forth your, into our hearts, we beseech you, our Lord, the, that as we have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought to the, the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.